again. Welcome to Manch Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons Garthwaite. And I'm Carla Garrick. And here we are. Um, it is, I think, the 9th, the 11th. 11th. <laughs> because uh, the only reason I know is because I do know yesterday was the 10th for some obscure yeah, reason. I always I have remember to think writing about it. I was like, oh, yeah, that was the 10th. So today's t the 11th. So we're about a third of the way through October, um, which means we're what? 10% way through Chris through holidays, through the winter? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's Every super time, optimistic. I'm, I'm gonna, I am going to try I mean, to come up with that number. Or every week we'll have a percentage of how far we are till you know, through winter. Till spring. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, I was just looking at flights because friends of ours live in Costa Rica. Uh -huh. And they were like, hey, why don't we all meet up in Costa Rica for Thanksgiving this mm -hmm. year? We have good friends who are out on the West Coast. We're here. They're down there. Yep. And... I was like, yeah, that sounds fun. So now the West Coast people have bailed because they were like, have you looked at plane ticket I prices? Know. And you I was like, know. no, I was looking in Hopper and it looked reasonable. And then I looked early this morning and I was like, like ooh. ooh. Yeah, it's like, um, it's like nice to want to go places, but not if it's ridiculously expensive because it just... Well, it's just, I think, you know, I remember predicting when all of this COVID stuff started, you know, we talked about, you know, what what is like, what is the bigger geopolitical outcomes that we're going to see? Yep. And I said, well, you know, one of the interesting things is that it's sort of affecting all luxury things, right? So immediately travel was influenced, mm -hmm. eating out was influenced, going to the theater, doing anything yeah. that is a quality of life choice um, kind of got shut down. And I don't think we, we really recovered from that. No. I mean, I know the restaurant industry definitely did. No, and I think based on, I, I would agree, because we go to Florida once or twice every winter. So I'm looking at just, you know, randomly, I'll be like, eh, what's down here? And I feel like everything is significant. I mean, of course it's significantly higher. Everything's significant. Dong, 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 inflation, but which I we mean, predicted. You know, places, because you can't live off fake money forever. You know, we used to rent I, a one condo that I think we used to rent for like 200 a night, maybe 220 a night was like over 300 and I was like oh I'm not yeah. paying over 300 for that particular well, place. Well both priced out that way obviously uh, flights are up because gas is yep. really expensive because making proxy wars oh halfway across the world is not the best strategy no. you know there's a reason why a lot of smart thinkers are like you know interventionism doesn't really play out all that great well, and it's a you know, we watched a clip last night between um with dave smith and joe rogan and dave smith talking about um they were talking about the the impending you know end of the world because of the ukraine russia conflict um and dave was talking about how you know why don't people why can't people see things for what they are, which is kind of frustrating. So they were t he was talking about, you know, it, you can't look at everything from the now. You can't look at 9-11 and think the story started there because the story didn't start at 9-11. The story started when we stuck our nose yeah, well, into the Middle East way back here. So the same thing happened in Ukraine. And the part, the players is what's amazing that you don't hear more people talking about. When Joe Biden was vice president, he was in charge of Ukraine policy. Joe Biden was. His son, a walking, talking idiot, was given a position in a you know huge corporation on their board of directors that he made all sorts of money. Bursima, he made yeah. fifty thousand dollars a month in uh, Ukraine while Joe Biden was vice president in charge of U.S. Ukraine policy. We have now sent over a hundred million dollars to the Ukraine. If you don't see it for what it is, which is basically money laundering yes. for the Biden crime yes. syndicate and their because cronies. Because what happens is we send we send funds and whatnot to the Ukraine to help them. And then the companies, these corrupt companies that we're affiliated with, send the money back to the United States. And I would almost bet a beer that they go to political action committees that support Democrat candidates. Oh, no, Shocking, I know. No, totally shocking, No right? doubt. The, the, the entire Ukraine situation it's is- It's bad. It's off. Is, is, uh, is so shocking and just the lack of well, and oversight, the lack of journalistic where, integrity, the lack of follow is, the money. Well, where is the negotiation right now? Where is the United States and, and Europe 
stepping in to say, look, we have got to negotiate something between these two entities well, the because question... otherwise we're just all dead. No, all well, of us. well, first of all, one, don't buy into the nuclear scare tactics. Oh, that I is, that is fear true. mongering. Mm -hmm. No, that is literally the 50 year simulation uh, story, right? So, so let's just go back and put it in its historical context. So, um, the first time nuclear weapons were used, America, the only nation ever to actually yep. deploy nuclear weapons. So if anyone is, you know, like, ooh, maybe we should be careful, I would say we should be most careful about America, not Russia, because America is the one country that's ever done it, right? So at the time, they were asking, the, the emperor of Japan said he would conditionally surrender, but that he didn't want to give up his crown, right? He didn't want to give up the status as the emperor of Japan, a millennia, thousands of year old tradition. And America was like, unless you make it unconditional, we will not accept your surrender. Okay, that is like such a silly way to approach, I don't know, diplomacy. So that was uh, Nagasaki and Hiroshima. Then Bay of Pigs, same friggin' story, totally manufactured. Could I mean? And thank God K Kennedy was in power, and and he was kind of a peacenik for for a president. And so that was an entire manufactured artificial thing that sort of brought us to the brink of war, and then cooler minds prevailed. I don't think there is a danger of actual nuclear Armageddon. I think it is, they're like, well, we kind of scared you all with the virus and now you don't seem that scared anymore. Although you should be right now because the EU came out yesterday and they were like, oh yeah, you know what? We really didn't have any data I know, right. at all. Oops, you got us, um, whoops. Um, and the data is horrifying and you can't find the numbers out of Israel anymore. No, but I, I so, so I think I, di that I disagree on the the nuclear concerns. I so I, I, I think we're dealing with irrational parties, including Putin and Russia. I think I think for a variety of reasons, like they talk about um, the Russia invading Ukraine as unprovoked, but it really wasn't unprovoked because we stuck our nose in like we always do, and we. We establish, you know, we take out this group of, of leaders and we put in a different, a more Western leaning group of leaders. But there was like always a slice of Ukraine on the edge that just wanted to be Russia. They wanted to be part of Russia. And there was at some point um, a negotiation that was working that basically said, um, we'd let the, you know, we'll let those people go to Russia and Ukraine will just agree to not join NATO. So, um, so what is the United States doing so, trying to push them to join NATO, which will immediately require the United States, because we are part of NATO, to defend militarily so, Ukraine? So, and the way to think about it, so that was my point. So, so both the previous times we've sort of had these scenarios, they've been manufactured because of a lack of actual honest dealings by the on the part of the US government. I'm sorry. And that is exactly what's happening in the Ukraine. Because Russia actually said, if you make the Ukraine join NATO, we're gonna have a war. And so what did what did the EU decide to do? You know what we should do? We should have uh, Ukraine join NATO and see what happens. So I'm not saying there's a right or a wrong side to any of this. But I do think so. So I think for everyone's own mental health, you can't be scared of things oh, that I you mean, can't I'm not control. I'm changing my life right? by any means because I can't control whether or not I'm. So, so I'm for us here. to actually worry about it is no, because it's that one of those high frequency things where you're like, oh my god, if that goes into you know your noggin, that is not a good like thing to worry about, right? So, so when when they start to dial up that fear factor, it behooves us to go. Mm, all right, well, I can't control that. There's nothing I can do about it. If it's really going to happen, I'm going to wish I had never left South Africa because apparently that's the one safe place in the entire planet to be <laughs> if that in, you know, Antarctica. Um. Um, so, so it's unfortunate that we're at this stage, but here's the thing. I mean, if you do a deep dive on what's happening in the Ukraine and you actually stack all the facts together, and I'm not just talking Hunter Biden's laptop stuff, but that's a part of it. And this whole 
propaganda thing of the Russian misinformation, disinformation yeah. stuff. They, they've made it so that it's incredibly difficult for anyone to actually discern factually what is going on but the truth is out there and it is unpackable and it behooves you to actually go search for those answers because it's corruption from start to finish and war is a racket and only the military industrial complex and their cronies get rich out of it and everyone else suffers and here's what i have to say about war if you want to go to war you go Leave the, like, like, why don't the politicians, I mean, Biden and, and Putin can go bear fight um, each other somewhere. Um, speaking of things that we can't really control or do anything about. Yes. I see that um, the Parks Department is proposing changing the rules in parks because this will somehow do something about homeless. Um, the Committee on Traffic and Public Safety, which is chaired by Alderman Bill Berry, made, um, came up with a idea of adding a new ordinance prohibiting camping and fires within public parks, which I didn't know you couldn't already do, but okay. And this, which, um, and would, uh, would add a modification that prohibits the use of tarps, umbrellas, or structures as things prohibited for the use of camping without the permission of the Department of Public Works, blah, blah, blah. So they're discussing this, and I thought it was interesting that the Ward 12 aldermen, which I don't think the Ward 12 aldermen was elected, right? They were appointed after the... Or was there a special election? I don't remember. I don't remember either. I can't remember after Keith Hirschman left. Anyways, Ward 12 alderman Aaron George Kelly, who I believe is a Democrat, but don't quote me on that, requested a discussion on the topic before it went to the vote, stating that the item should be tabled. Things to do with the homeless as winter's approaching should be tabled until they have a new homeless direct, a home, director of homeless initiatives hired by the city. And I'm thinking, I don't know, the purpose of this is that people are starting to really complain that they can't use the parks because there's homeless living in all of them and there's human feces and needles and all sorts of tr trash and whatnot. Um, she also feared that the provision would have the effect of making the city's ho houseless, because we don't want to call them homeless anymore, the houseless or unhoused as they're referred to some of themselves, feel unwelcome in the city parks. Well, here's they my, should uh, feel unwelcome, in the, unwelcome in the city parks. You are in the city parks. You're not a Sorry. member of our community. You don't pay the taxes that pay to maintain those parks. Dan and I drove through Manchester, must have been on Sunday. And I, well, before I get there, the thing that irked me out of this, and maybe it was taken out of context, so Bill Barry, if this was taken out of context, please, by all means, email us at manchtalk at gmail.com and tell me so. He's quoted as saying, it's unfortunate, because um, said Pat Long said that he's heard from constituents saying the parks have been overtaken by people with shopping carts, which first of all, Victoria Sullivan and I were talking and she had a good point. She goes, they don't use shopping carts anymore. They use baby carriages, right. which is funny. So we're like way behind the ball on this too. We're not going to prohibit, you know, I guess they really can't prohibit baby carriages, but when was the last time you actually saw shopping carts? It's not shopping carts. Anyways, Bill Berry was quoted as saying, it's unfortunate because it's probably just a few people that ruin it for others. And I thought, dude, you need to leave pasture drive over in West Manchester and go further than just city hall or wherever it is you go, because it is not just a few people. Dan and I drove across bridge street, right? Past what used to be St. Joseph's school. So past the school, which is where the Crevia Academy is mm -hmm. past that park. That park was pretty open. We drove down one of the one ways and cut back over. Now, personally, I don't know where the homeless shelter is because I don't live in a homeless shelter. And we come around the corner and I'm like, what is happening? There was just like people everywhere. Mm -hmm. Kind of like what it looks like when a concert lets out. There's just yep. like scattering people. And I'm like, oh, this must be the homeless shelter. And then on, on that same street is a row of like, say, 10 newer condos, townhouses. And I'm thinking, so wait, those people now have to contend with all these people just like laying on the sidewalk in front of their homes. So then we come back around to go past um, the park across, I guess that's, I don't even know what they are anymore. The park across from the library. And we come around the corner and there's this dude in a wheelchair wheeling himself down the middle of the street. And he's like, uh, and I'm thinking, oh my, and there's all these people near the food bank and there's people all over the park. And when we were out on 
Thursday night, we went to Margarita's to have a cocktail and some nachos at 5 o'clock, so we're not talking dark. By about 6, we were done, and we headed down the street to Boards and Brews. And there's this guy, I'm pretty sure the guy who used to sit outside of Baked and sell his little artwork, shooting up on the sidewalk in down, at 6 o'clock at night on a Thursday. And Dan just looked at me like, what world are we living in? Well, as I drove here this morning, sure enough, that guy's hanging out in the little vestibule with his little, you know, tarp over him. And I'm thinking, yeah, you're the guy who used to be up the street. That's not a homeless person. That's a drug addict. That is a drug addict who doesn't want to do a single thing other than sit on the street and do drugs in a convenient place for him. And I'm not okay with it anymore. And I'm not, an, uh, you know, like, I'm not an anti-drug, you know, like, I don't think I'm a... Um, Look, here's the thing. What, you know, get, so here's, uh, we, we shouldn't even have to justify it. <laughs> it's like your actual duty to society is to not be a, a burden on society. <laughs> like, like, I don't know when we lost this balance of how stuff's supposed to work. And it's not an issue of uh, kindness, no, compassion, it's not about tolerance. Empathy, sympathy, it's, none of it's, that. It's like, no, like if you can't do the bare minimum to to function within society then i'm 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 struggling with like why should i care more about you than you care about yourself right you know, carla you're so cruel these no. people have trauma they have whatever so here's the news folks everyone <laughs> has crap disability does not everyone mean pain. i mean has issues so the thing is you have to actually figure it out and we can't keep excusing this kind of behavior because then what happens is you have societal malaise which is where we are mm -hmm. it, and it's because of socialism it is because if because you say you're not responsible it's all of us it's for the greater good it's like wishy-washy it's like no you the bum downstairs shooting up you're the problem we're right. not the problem you know so the reality is you have to actually address the truth, not the stories we tell ourselves, but the actual situations that are going on. I have come to the realization that, you know, for years people would say perception. So, so perception is now more important than reality. Right. Look, so, we're doing so, something. And, and that is, <laughs> that means we are actually living in insanity because people are saying things like there is no truth. Well, and it's like, is. well, there is. Th I mean, well, gravity there's, exists. Yeah, there's, there's no, there's no gender. I, I, I mean, That's I a guess science I, thing. I'm sorry. I mean, I guess some, some uh, Canadian professor is now actually. Uh, they tried to. No, actually, it was in, a, in an American school. The, the professor said there are two genders. Th his entire class freaked out, and they didn't fire the professor. They said, if you don't want to take his class, you can go to a different class where you can learn, I don't know, Something untruths, else. so that, I don't know, that doesn't hurt your... So, yeah. So, Non-science, the, but, the but, unscience class. But it's troubling because it's like, I mean, it's the same thing we just went through with it's COVID, not, right. which it's, was so frustrating. You know, like, I can't tell you how mad i get where i'm like we sat on this show for for months and months and months like two cassandras and canaries in the coal <laughs> mine and the whole thing going we read the data we have opinions because we are actually looking at the science we are not saying science comes from someone on television telling me what to do and for that, you get raked over the coals and well, cold names now. On the COVID, just a note, we, Dan and I are knocking on doors. And we this past weekend, so it was me, Dan, and Victoria, and we were over, obviously, in War 10. And um, I want to say two or three different people that were knocking on the doors didn't, you know, they came to the, their storm door, but they're like, oh, no, no, because I have COVID right now. But it was, it was nice not to see anybody sick with anything, obviously, but it was nice to see that people weren't terrified that they had COVID. They were being smart that they had COVID, just like if they had the flu and they're like, no, 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 I don't wanna, I don't wanna like engage with you because I don't wanna get, you know, share this with you. But, but they were, nobody seemed distraught. And that was, that alone, and these weren't all, these weren't all 
young people. These were, you know, some older people. And it's nice to see older people n living less scared because I think we terrified the old people. And it's really not right. Well, um, again, and that's part of my thing where I'm saying, you know, that's why I don't want us to buy into this nuclear thing because it's just another, they're looking for a replacement narrative to keep that fear level primed because actually living in fear harms your immune yes, system it does. so it actually makes you more susceptible to sickness and disease immunocompromised all those things that they have terrified you with you know because again the coronavirus is the common cold virus um, you know um and so this was a new common cold yes. virus that we shut the world down and now we have all this economic knock-on effects now talking about perception and reality they just up, uh, like uh, um, <laughs> not appointed what uh, uh nominated yes ben bernanke ben bernanke for a nobel I'm prize right. in I economics and, I thought, and i'm like uh, 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 my brain <laughs> My brain hurt when I, mean, I, I, I just had to keep going. I was like, it was in the paper, right? I put I up past. I'm like, I'm not going to read it. It's going to make me crazy. I actually put up a poll and I said, is this better or worse? I'm going to have to post than, my favorite. Um, when they gave Obama in 2009 oh yeah, the Obama. Nobel Peace Prize while he was bombing children in Yemen to death. He killed American citizens. With drones, so, but they gave Obama a peace prize. Yeah. These are the reasons why no one should listen to these freaking clowns week, anymore. Next week, I will bring. It's a video. It's probably from ten years ago now, and it's Ben Bernanke, and it's one of those little cartoons. <laughs> I have got to find it and share it because, and maybe I'll bring it and we'll play it because even though it's the out of date, the 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 craziness in it was about the Fed and you know. Goldman Sachs and Ben Bernanke and, you know, being the Ben Bernanke. It's just awesome. Anyways, um, I did want to mention, I saw in, I think this was in the paper today, um, Brady Sullivan's looking yes. to convert the building. In, it's the brown, shiny building across the street from... Um, you it's know, on where, Elm. But you know where like the, the, where they're redoing the corner from LeMay's Jewelers, where she's re... re it's kind of yeah. like across. It used to... I thought it used to be the pharmaceutical college, but I don't know. I said it was Snoop. And basically, they have only one tenant back in that building at this point, and they want to just move them to another one of their spaces. Um, but they would like to convert it to 110 apartments, which I'm okay with. So, so I found several things interesting. First of all, the headline was misleading because they did not use the word convert. They used the word build. Build. That, that is set off my, my spidey yeah. senses I was because I was where. like, oh, I bet you that means they're taking some grant somewhere that yep. says they have to build something. Yep. But be it as it may. So they're talking about converting these into apartment buildings. I actually think that's a grand idea. I think idea. it is too. I think I think it's great that they're working on the buildings behind Murphy's. Those are going to be upscale. Oh, I'm really, 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 really sad. I know that but they just ripped out I these know. historical, beautiful, but old brick buildings good to put thing, up tin crap. The, what I don't know what it's going to look like, but the amenities that are going to be in there. I mean, there were courtyards, and you know, I was I was like, oh, that's mm. quite different. That's quite different than what I was expecting. So I have a feeling those are going to be better you know, nicer. You got the ones that are getting finished, worked out, you know, they're getting closer to completion across from Market Basket. That's another plus. What I thought was funny and ironic and annoying as hell at the same time, the current city zoning would only allow a 36 apartment units. How, if they're able to build 110 one and two bedroom apartments, how in God's name is zoning only for 36? Our, our, our zoning is our terrible. Our zoning in the city is awful. It is punitive it is restrictive and when people complain and none of these none of these how units in this building just so you know are going to be um workforce housing or low income that, they have already said mm. it they are going to be market market you know whatever the market is at the time and i mean it'll be interesting to see how that actually does materialize i'll tell you this i had a meeting uh hank stebbins didn't hmm. show up oh. but his handler did uh with the community yeah. garden stuff uh, last Friday and so we were talking about maybe like different sites for it so for folks yeah. back home who will remember there's a there's a uh, you know a park a public park next to Parkside School you know five dead-end streets 10 miles per hour that you know the Stebbins family decided they want to buy from the city and put in this 40,000 uh, 40,000 square foot 
building. monstrosity yeah. building, right? So pave over a parking, a pave over a park and put in a parking lot. Okay. So we had a meeting one on one. Um, and so I was suggesting other sites yeah. that might work. And honestly, I think this one might be perfect for them. It's across from Giorgio's. It's the old Elks Club. Yep. Which and, I noticed that they're. And it's for sale yep. for $600,000, which is the same amount it they're would supposed definitely to pay be a for better this location. car. It's, it's closer to what I believe they were saying were the, the pockets of extreme yeah. poverty, which are the two. It's not in a neighborhood, of, a dense you know, neighborhood. Right. And then I was like, oh, I bet you the issue there would be zoning. So I'm I'm like, oh, I will help them get a variance right? to, you know, so but not stand in the way location. and and be like, hey, build six stories. I don't care, right? right? That's like a that's a commercial area yeah. with, you know, so they could put in levels of parking right. and they could put, you know, however many, you know, forty. Right. thousand square foot, make it a three story building is. instead of a two story building, you know, or whatever. in a place where it makes it sense, make more not sense on, there. you know. a a park with a community garden with right. uh you know in a quiet yeah. quiet neighborhood so i'm hoping they're gonna That's look into that but yeah. i was like oh i bet you their issue there would be the same thing as brady sullivan that the challenge is the oh, city we the have challenge to... is the city right it's always what the challenge is and they're the ones who fail the city government fails well you know and it's it's the city but it's always it's it's the government yeah ultimately why because when you remove the the relationship between voluntary decision makers and make it coercive and say one oh we're going to make these rules and we made them 200 years ago right. you know it's like okay uh, we need more nimbleness we need better zoning we need more places yeah. for people to stay so that i don't know we don't have to ban umbrellas and baby carriages from parks. I know, I know, I know. Um, <laughs> I thanks, want to reach out, uh, shout out to Manchester Public Television for um, taping the candidate segments. They do this every campaign cycle. Uh, they allow any candidates to do a three-minute pitch. They were doing those. They finished those up yesterday. They'll be out probably by the about the same time this show airs. Um, so keep an eye out. You'll be able to see more about the people running in your district. Um, if you have any questions about the election, uh, where to find sample ballots, anything like that, um, not you know, not from a biased perspective, just from like, hey, how do I register to vote? Hey, how do I find this? Uh, feel free to email us at manchtalk at gmail.com. I'm pretty fluent in all those details, um, and I'd gladly help anybody who's trying to vote do so because I think everybody should vote. Um, but that's all we have for this week. We'll be back next week. Uh, 70 some degrees tomorrow. So get out and take a walk. Ooh. Um, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Go get your vitamin D yep. before the winter if comes. If you have a dog, take him for a walk in the sunshine. <laughs> Anyways, we'll all see right. you next week. Bye guys. Bye.